the whole of Sunshine Coast Masters Club has really been pet addressed. <laughs> and this time, she spoke about visualizing and no more compromise. <laughs> Guess what? <clears throat> we are going to paint the right picture in mind and we are going to visualize amazing big things. So ladies and gentlemen, let's give it for Yukiya. <laughs> Now, we move to part 1A. One is done. One is a special program only because we have all of you guys over here. Technically, if you are paying 200 rupees for a Toastmasters club, you got money back of 100 rupees. This is philosophy. This message from Priya Darshi will be there for the rest of your life, isn't it? Yes. Sure? Yes. Do you promise that you will visualize? Yes. Do you promise that you will visualize the right things? <laughs> very good to know. And that brings me to this very interesting perspective. If I was starting over here with an angry face, would you like it? No, you wouldn't like it. Who wants to see a guy so angry? Who wants to see someone who's giving so much of negative energy? Isn't it? What do you like? You like someone who's laughing, who's smiling. A lot of positive energy. And one of the things that helped build this bridge, which I also said some time ago, is humor. Laughter. Right? But it's not an easy skill to I mean, it? Can you make me laugh? You will tell some terrible jokes. And that will make me angry. Right? <laughs> so there are various ways in which you can go ahead and use humor. And also maybe have some tips, tricks of the trade to maybe connect with the audience using humor. But what is important is, you shouldn't be overdoing it. What will happen when you overdo? Samosa. Remember? <laughs> Samosa. That is what would actually happen. Right? But, we have someone over here to give you a little insight into humor. Called the Humor Blueprint. This is something I really like it, and at least I am really, really looking forward to learning a lot. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time now for the keynote session. And to present the keynote session, we have, guess who? A keynote speaker, of course. Easy answer. Very bad story. Okay. He is an IT professional from Oregon. And he has two phases. One phase is IT professional in the morning. Come evening, full-fledged Toastmaster Macha. That is how he functions. He's been an active Toastmaster for the last three plus years. And in addition to it, what he really believes in is mentoring. No, he really thinks high of mentoring and has mentored a lot of people. Ladies and gentlemen, he's also currently serving as a district chief judge. Please put your hands together and give a warm welcome. Sunshine warm welcome to Toastmaster Nitin Bhagat, the keynote speaker. That sounded like a very over exaggerated LinkedIn post. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I'll be honest, I wrote this introduction myself. It's an old introduction that I've been using for a while. I gave it to Harshita when she asked. <laughs> And when he was reading it out, I was like, Hey! <laughs> That's me! <laughs> but thank you for the amazing introduction. It's always nice to hear good things about yourself, isn't it? Yeah? Yeah? I mean, I stay with my parents, so I don't often get the chance to give compliments. <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> oh! Oh! How many people need therapy? Awesome. Alright, Rick. Uh, I'm sorry if my energy seems a little low today. Uh, I had to take this flight because I came all the way from my team. <laughs> Not a good experience. Well, let's get started. Ali, I don't know about you, but three, what, three years of the pandemic? What? Three? Not with three years. Not with three years. Um, ever since the pandemic began, right, we've been constantly using Zoom throughout, right? Uh, our meetings are on Zoom, we personally go smartly. Zoom, WebEx, Teams, whatever, uh, Google, Meet, whatever the best is, right? Uh, I use Zoom so much, I've become habituated to it. You know? 
like so let's say you have a partner and your partner messages in the morning and he slash she slash them i like hey good morning baby i love you what do you reply to that i won't you won't reply i need some money <laughs> Are you sure you'll make it like it was a parent? <laughs> But the usual response is good morning baby, I love you too, right? The template response to that, that's, that's all it is, right? My girlfriend messages me, like good morning baby, I love you. I reply back with good morning, oh, can you see my screen? It's very pure, that's how habited I am to do, right? Um, when you sit on Zoom for that long, you get, you get used to certain things. And I've become used to that. So I'm going to ask you a few questions. I want you to respond and so that you're the best audience the world has ever seen. Can you do that? Yes. Alright, then you will give me a cheer if I'm clearly audible. Yes. I mean, can you do better than that? Yeah? Yes. Alright. Good. We'll try one more time. Alright. Give me a loud cheer if I'm clearly visible. Yes. See, I travel 30 kilometers for a louder cheer. Okay. Give me one last option. Last time, they will give the loudest cheer you can possibly master if I'm looking good today. Yeah. 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 Alright, fantastic. Thank you. Uh, I think it's clear by now that I like you. Yeah, it goes without saying, right? Uh, I've been on stage officially for almost three years now, professionally and otherwise. And if I don't have humor on stage, I feel very fun. Irrespective of how long I'm on right? I can be on stage for a minute. As the timer on essay, I can be on stage for like an hour as a keynote speaker. Irrespective of the time duration, I need to have you. Alright, if I don't have a joke, I feel like I feel like there's something missing. You know? It's like an Arnab Goswami show without any violence. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm just like, okay, something is not right. That's how I feel when I don't have a joke on stage, right? Uh, so in the past three years of me speaking, and trying to incorporate humor, observing other people do it, I have learned a few things about how to do it. Uh, and I'm going to show the same to you today as well. Right? So hopefully we'll try to learn something new today. That isn't rocket science, honestly. It's something that you can very clearly notice. But I'll just put it on paper for these for you. Okay? Can we get started? Yes? Yes. yes. Alright, fantastic. The very first thing, okay, Jeff, that you need to have if you are being humor in stage is to have a very, very, very good opening sentence. I don't mean an opening paragraph. I don't mean an opening stanza. Opening sentence is very important. Right? How many of you have been to a comedy show? Raise the hands. Yeah? Alright, top of you. Top you. If you notice, if you go to a comedy show, there will be an opening act and then there will be a movie. Right? You don't usually pay for the opening act, but they're still there. Samosa, basically. Right? Uh, you see, when an audience enters a comedy show, they are not very open to laughing. A little cold hearted at that point. The job of an opening act is to warm you up, get you going, so that by the time the main act comes on stage, they are already willing to laugh. Right? That's the job of an opening act. Your opening sentence does the same thing. It makes people laugh, it gets them a little warm, a little open, a little more receptive to laugh. Right? Um, that's the number one thing that an opening line does to you. A solid, good opening line does to you. The second thing that an opening line does to you is build credibility. Alright? Imagine if you come on stage, you say a joke of the first insert itself, and people will be like, watch out. If the opening line itself is so funny, how good will the rest of the stage be? Right? It's like, uh, it's like IPL for example. You hit 30 runs of the first over itself, and everybody is like, Ned Grant is 300. Right? Whether you go up to 300 or not, you don't know. But the audience is already expecting that because it started off on a good note. Right? Credibility. Right? The opening line builds credibility. Um, how can you have a good opening line? A good template to follow for an opening line is to talk about the environment that people have noticed but not addressed so far. Right? For example, if you do a little cash back, the head of my clubs, you made some assumption or some sort of judgment, good or bad, whatever, I'm not judging over here, right? But you made some sort of judgment about the introduction and I spoke about it. Nobody else did, I spoke about it, I highlighted it, right? That's a good thing to start off with. Uh, 
more things like traffic, for example, the heat, the weather, uh, the physical environment is also a good structure or template that can be used for a good opening. Line. For example, let's say again, a bulb is fluctuating. Alright, and nobody has addressed it so far. You come on stage and you're like, hey everyone, thanks like for coming out. I'm sorry about this fluctuating bulb that's behaving like my love life. <laughs> right? It's not over the top funny. You are not like rolling on the floor laughing. But it's, it's still like, oh, okay, that's funny. Thank you for addressing it. Thank you for getting that off my mind. Right? So that's a good template to follow for an opening line. Okay? We go to opening lines. Yes? Yes. 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 All right. Fantastic. The next thing is the last one. All right? Uh, so, what did you have for breakfast on June 14, 2004? <laughs> I don't remember what I did. You don't remember what I did. What did you have for lunch today? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. You do this. Chapati. Chapati. All right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. As human beings, we tend to remember the things that have happened for reason. Right. A good line will help your audience remember. The vibe of your session. Right? They won't remember the exact content of it, but they'll go back home remembering the fact that hey, you have fun. Right? So just how important opening line is. Likewise, it is super, super, super important, equally important to have a good closing line. Okay? Uh, a good template to follow for a closing line is something called callback. Have you heard of this word? Yes. yes. Oh, then I'll move on. No. <laughs> Callback is when you repeat the same joke but in a different context. Okay. Uh, what happens with callbacks is we have said a joke, people have are like okay, that's funny, let's move on, they have moved on. And then you bring back the same joke again. It's like an ex coming back without without any context, right? Uh, and you don't expect that coming back. And that makes you laugh. Right? So an opening line is to talk about the environment or things that are not addressed but noticeable. And a closing line is to have a callback to a previous joke that you have made in the same session. Alright? Go with callback joke as well. Yes? Can we move on? Yes. 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 Fantastic. Cool. Okay. Now we'll begin with the actual technicalities of comedy. Okay. You can have this in a stand-up comedy as well. You can have this in a more structured, humorous speech as well. Both are very different. But we can follow these things in both of these uh, sections. The very first thing is called premise. What of this word? Premise. P R E M I S E. Yeah. Yeah. Can you just like shout out what do you what comes to your mind when I say the word premise? Setup. Setup. Not completely accurate, but sort of yes. Setting the context. Setting the context. Again, not completely accurate, but a little around that area. Assumption or that Assumption, okay, that's also a little. School premise, ladies and gentlemen, have you heard of this word? School right. premise. Yeah? yeah. What is school premise? Surrounding. The surrounding, right? It's basically the boundary under which a school resides, right? A premise in comic terms is something similar. It's basically a boundary under which your joke. Or it's basically an umbrella under which you joke with that. Alright? If you have seen uh, YouTube videos of stand up comedy, you would notice comedians start with cats are falling to give me a cheer. iPhone users give me a cheer. Right? Have you seen those bits? Yeah? The point of that is to tell you that hey, my joke is about to be, is, uh, will be on Bollywood or will be an iPhone. They don't say, hey, Bollywood class make some noise. BMTC is really bad. <laughs> they don't do that. Right? Because that is going opposite to what premise is supposed to be. Right? So when I say, that the Bollywood make some noise, I'm telling you that my joke will be about Bollywood. So please restrict your imagination towards Bollywood. Okay? When a comedian comes on stage to start talking, you're like, this man can talk about a thousand things. So your mind is very cluttered with a lot of imagination, a lot of thoughts. When I sell out the premise, it becomes more structured, more focused towards the comedian. Right? So it builds a little bit of focus on the comedian. Right? So that's what premise is. Premise is basically just the topic of the, of the set 
not already in speech very a lot. There's no set template as such for premise. There's, there are various ways to do it, and we'll see in the, in the session going forward how to incorporate it. Okay. Good with premise, yeah? Can you move on? Yes. Okay. The next thing uh, is on that already have told is for the setup. Okay. What is setup? First thing you mentioned. An interesting opening. Okay. Someone said assumptions. Who is that? You. Right. A setup is basically the place where you give people a platform to make an assumption. Okay. A setup is where you create a picture of 70% of the truth. Not the whole truth, the 70% of the truth. Okay. A setup is where you tell people, for example, I'm going straight and I'll take a bike. That's the setup. I'm going straight, I hit a dead end, and based on my setup, I think I'll take a bike. That's the setup. Okay. The next thing is something called beat. B E A T. If it triggers childhood trauma, I'm sorry. <laughs> Bells, chappal, parents. It's not a therapy session. Right? A beat is basically a pause. A pause can last for a good pause can last for about five seconds. But again, it depends upon the setup and the complexity of it. But basically, a beat is where people make the actual assumption of the truth. A beat is where people actually assume that based on the information I have, the community is thinking right at this point. So that's the beat. Okay, are you good with setup? Yeah. Good with beat also? Finally, here's the function. And the punchline is where you like surprise, surprise, I'm going left. Alright? Got it? Can we try out an example? Yes? Did you hear a joke? Yes! Alright, yes. yes. oh, fantastic. So much energy for a joke that I have not played. Uh, it's a joke by this comedian called Anthony Jesselnik. He's an American comedian, has one or two specials on Netflix. He's very good with setup, being punchline kind of jokes, right? So here's what we're going to do. I'll give out the premise, I'll give out the setup, I'll give you a moment to make the assumption, and I want you to reply back to the assumption that you made in the most innocent way. Don't think about the function. Okay? Don't be over smart. <laughs> Just tell me the assumption that you made based on the most pure innocent mind that you have. Ready? Yes. Alright, one of his jokes says, my father never believed in instruction manuals. He said you do things, you go wrong, and that's how you do it. Which is why I never went to swimming classes. He would just pick me up and throw me to the Assumptions. You learn something. You learn something. Okay. Learn on your own. Learn on your own. Alright? Okay. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I thought this is a positive learning environment. <laughs> but he is still saying the joke, so we can't do it. Sir, correcting you as well. Fantastic. Okay, he is loud, alright. Cool. Any other assumption? Roots. Roots? <laughs> Very scientific now. <laughs> awesome. Alright, so he learned things the hard way. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. That's the most accurate representation of an assumption. Okay. We'll complete the group now. Yeah. yeah. My father never believed in instruction manuals. He said you do things, go wrong, that's how you learn. Which is why I never went for screen classes. You just pick me up and throw me into the water. To teach himself how to see. <laughs> Did not see that coming with you. Yeah? Understood? Premise? My father never believed in such a manual, so you know it revolves somewhere around life lessons and for doing things or whatever, right? Uh, including you do things to go wrong, all of that comes under premise. The setup is pick me up, give me the water. B. Assumption you make is learn with me hard it. And there's of course the punchline that I won't. I'm sure you got the punchline. Yeah? Good? Understood? We'll do one more joke. 
again by asking this link again. So this is a dark joke. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I got the response for that. Like, Does this work? Does this not work? Let's see. Okay. Hold on to our horse. Let's see. It was supposed to be my grandmother's 80th birthday. But unfortunately, because of drugs, alcohol, and other illegal substances. Punch time. Sorry, other shoe. Overdose. Overdose? <laughs> Good. Sorry? Death? Death? Alright. Good? We forgot it. Okay. Couldn't make it. Couldn't, the grandmother couldn't make it. Couldn't make it. Couldn't make it. Ah, right. Everybody is scoring century, grandmother is not scoring century. Got it. Uh, here's the actual joke. It was supposed to be my grandmother's 80th birthday. But unfortunately, due to drugs, alcohol, and other illegal substances, he was a boy. Right? This is one example of comedy. This is unpredictable. You don't see it coming, hence it makes it. It's like tickling someone. Right? Someone comes suddenly out of nowhere and tickles you over here. You're like, hey, what's up? But if they give you like a one month notice period, hey, I'm going to tickle you 31st April. <laughs> that doesn't exist, no? <laughs> Sorry. 31st <laughs> March, 8 p.m. And then you're like, okay, fine. Something is happening. So you saw it coming, right? So, a little bit of standard comedy is things that you don't really see coming. Okay? Having said that, is that all there is to comedy? <coughs> That was a punch, that was a setup. Yes, there is more to stand up comedy or comedy in general. You can have predictive comedy as well. Okay. Uh, how much time do we have? Almost time? Okay. Very quickly, I'll do it. If you've ever had chicken fox eggs and once? Yes! Yeah. Oh. Okay. Anyone think yellow bread or not? Anyone been in a relationship before? Did you enjoy? Yes. 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 <laughs> Why do I ask about chicken pox? It's because they are very simple. I know in your head, you are thinking, what are you saying? How can chicken pox be similar to relationships? I tell you. Uh, chicken pox is very similar to relationships because there is a good effort happening at least once in a while. <laughs> like it or not, it's a bit of relationship. Yes, one to have. Right? I just think back of the conversation you've had when you were a child. This kid comes up to me in first grade. He's like, hey, Nathan, we have chicken pox. And I'm like, no, I don't have chicken pox. Don't worry, one day you will have it. Thank you for that warning. That's very similar to the conversation we have now. No, like I can really imagine two guys, sky hair, no way, jeans, part in active or something, four of them, and it's gone. But hey, Macha, you have perfect, yeah? No, Macha, I don't have perfect. Don't worry, one day you will have. Right? The hope of it happening at least once in your life. Stupid box? Stupid. Very simple. Are you convinced? Or do I need to give more examples? Do you need more examples? Very creepy audience. Cool. What happens when you get stupid box? People like something. Everybody say, go into that room, walk in the top, do not come up. Right? What happens when you can do it? Your friends isolate. Yeah? Ever happened? Yes? The day I got into a relationship, two of my friends, like, hey, Machi, you want to go to KFC? We can go to KFC, 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 and then it's the goal for that. It's okay, it's survival. Right? For everything it is this. You want to go to PMA or watch a movie? Just go to PMA or watch a movie? What about Nithin? Nithin is the goal for that. <laughs> He'll survive. Right? For every single thing he did this. He said, oh, quick, come, let's go. He has been wanting to do this. Nitri has a girlfriend, huh? <laughs> <laughs> He'll survive. Isolation. Religion. You can pause. Relationships. Excellent. But you're still not telling us. I'm going to do one final example. Why you can pause and do it. The next time someone you know has gone through a heart. Don't isolate them. Don't give them space or whatever. 
I want you to walk up with them and ask them if the love of their life left. Just let you go. But mark and start from them. <laughs> right? So, ladies and gentlemen, that's an example of predictive form. I have established way earlier that KG is put in the school. I gave an example of one. And you knew that similar example applies to the other one of this. And because you made that assumption correctly, your brain gave you a little bit of dopamine for being correct and made it. Right? So, form is not just predictiveness versus unpredictiveness. Both of it applies. It depends on who you are how can you apply and which kind of property works best for which kind of properties. Right? Now, before I leave the stage, I will tell you about one minor technicality of form. This thing is called tag. Not timer or something. Yeah. It's just tag. A tag is basically a punchline for the thing and another punchline. Alright? So what happens is when I tell a joke, you're like, okay, the joke is over. You move on, but then I repeat the entire thing with another joke. Again, that you don't see one. Right? Um, are people comfortable with Hindi over here? Yes. yes. Yeah, can I do it this little Hindi? Yeah. It's basic Hindi, so I hope you'll understand. Uh, it's a joke by the name of Samay Rana. Did you hear it? Of it? Yeah. So, what I'm saying is, I'm going to petrol pump. My parents are going to go. The petrol pump is going to go. I'm 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 going to go. As a premise, just I went to the petrol pump. You know the joke revolves around petrol, vehicle, journey, etc. Et the operator of the petrol pump said, Sir, look at the zero. And I did like this. Do you mean the consumption? Okay, my case is about the machine and the petrol pump or whatever you want to call it. And then there's a set of uh, punchline and calling up with that. Right? So, like I said before, it is not rocket science. All these are very basic things. It's just that you have to be persistent to. Try to get the best form of comedy, the best form of sentence. Okay. Uh, before I leave this speech, I'll leave you with one final, final thought about why I do comedy. Okay. Um, I've been on stage for about 20 minutes. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. 20 minutes. Thank you for that. In the last 23 minutes, one common phenomenon that I noticed among at least most of you. Is that you laugh? Right? When I make a joke and when two of you laugh, to me that's proof that the two of you agree with what we Right? Despite all the political views that we have, despite all the religious views that we have that makes people kill each other, you found one thing that you agree with. Right? To me that is common. The nightly. Okay? This is a very small scale set setup. We are 40 people? 40 people? Yeah. Think of it as a large scale event. Think of someone like Zakir Khan, for example. Right? Zakir Khan, for those of you who don't know, is one of the best selling kind of movies. This guy performs in stadiums, which can house like 40,000, 50,000 people. So when Zakir Khan does one show for one hour, 40,000 people forget about their problems. They forget that they are heartbroken. They forget that they have home loans to pay. They forget they have Jira tickets to close in the following month. <laughs> right? For that one hour, 40,000 people are united under one roof because they found a bunch of things to laugh for together. Right? And that's my reason of doing comedy. And if there's one thing I want you to take away today, is to find your own reason to do comedy. Because in my opinion, I can't think of a more reason. Right? On that note, ladies and gentlemen, it's been an absolute pleasure being here. Thank you so much for being a lovely audience. My name is Kavan. Thank you so much.